apples in Kazakhstan, potatoes in Peru, blueberries in North America. Once upon a time, these foods only grew in these places. Today, they're grown all over the world, and we can largely thank one man, Christopher Columbus. Columbus crossed the Atlantic in 1492 in search of Asia. Instead, he bumped into the Americas and kicked off an exchange of foods that would transform the way we eat. It's officially called the Columbian Exchange, but it also involved all the 15th and 16th century explorers who followed him. Their ships brought to the American continents the first coffee beans, bananas, sugarcane, wheat. Today, wheat is one of America's biggest crops. Returning home, they introduced Europeans to peanuts, peppers, corn, cacao. Imagine the Swiss without chocolate or the Italians without tomatoes. Now, this exchange also brought horrific diseases like smallpox and measles. Within a century of 1492, 90% of the native population had died from these new epidemics. I'm gonna let that sink in. But the exchange also gave the indigenous people horses and better weapons to hunt with and new architectural techniques and farming equipment. I don't know, seems like a fair trade. But when it comes to food, and perhaps only food, that cross-pollination was wondrous. It was transformative. In this place, Philadelphia, cradle of American independence, future President John Adams rallied against tea and coffee, drinks that were not native to the United States. Instead, he recommended hard cider, made with American apples. But he was forgetting that those sweet apple trees weren't American. They'd been brought here by British colonists. You see, by the 1700s, the globe's once distinct lines were already blurred. And for that, we can say, thanks, Columbus, for reminding us that we're just one world, at least when it comes to our food. <laughs>